Hey guys, Tim here with Way of the Rope. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the seven most common mistakes that I see when I'm coaching people either in person or online. And hopefully this helps you to recognize them if you're doing them in your practice so you can stop doing them and get more out of swinging this old piece of rope around. Now don't be too disheartened if you do make some of these mistakes as I still make some of them too, and it just means that there's more room for growth and chance for progress if we do correct them. And if you do stay till the end of the video, you'll see that number seven also doubles up as my number one tip for making rapid progress too. So let's get started. Now, though these are in no particular order, the first one, number one, which I'm gonna start with, is probably the most common mistake, if not the top two or three common mistakes that I see people make when it comes to rope flow. And that is what I call all arms and no spine. Most of us move very stiff. Most of our training is very bilateral, two sides at once if we're, if we're lifting weights. Uh, we've just never really done much rotational training, especially not this infinity uh, training that the rope is all about. So we try to use our arms to do everything and no spine. And this is why the foundations, this is why I built it in the first two weeks of the eight week course is spine focus because we wanna get the spine mobilize and then when the arms move that is because the spine started that motion and the arms are just following the energy from what the spine has sent into motion so one of the big mistakes i see people make is yes in the underhand figure eight overhand figure eight they're just moving the arms side to side and the spine is not leading this motion so we want to mobilize the spine on this figure eight path and then when it comes to drag and roll again people are whipping because they're used to skipping rope where they do this and they're not using the spine and rotational movement, we've got to use rotation and this figure of eight, this gyroscope pattern here for the drag and roll, this is what's happening, not up and down. And that's why if your rope is getting caught in the middle and you, you feel like you're getting tied in the middle every time you practice drag and roll, it's because you're whipping down the rope and it's sending these, these two spirals of energy until they come crashing into the middle and then it wraps in a little knot like that in the middle of the rope and that's not to do with uh, the type of rope you're using it's to do with the whip that you're sending down the rope and so using all arms and no spine and no rotation is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. Number two is a mistake that I also still make and that is trying to go too fast as I say in all the courses slow is smooth and smooth quickly becomes fast and so you see me maybe doing these aggressive flows but even when I do them slower and I watch it back they look a lot more fluid even though they're not as aggressive and fast and energetic they always look a lot smoother and more fluid the rope is a highlighted exaggeration expression of the body of the movement patterns and so we work with it we slow it down the rope is patient we let it guide us we work with it 50 50 we move half it moves half and we feel the pattern we feel the flow and then we start to increase the speed but for most people in the beginning the key is just to slow it all down. And again, I have to remind myself of that as well. Number three, having a rope that's too long. The rope wants to just tick over the floor, skim the grass, maybe half an inch, maybe an inch of it hits the grass. But if you've got two inches, sometimes I see four inches hitting into the ground on every revolution, that's gonna take out so much momentum and it's gonna jar the rhythm and jar the timing of everything that we're learning to do. So actually, one thing I've come to learn as I've uh, deepened my practice is it may even be better to have no rope touching the floor than to have too, well, it definitely is better to have no rope touching the floor than to have too much rope touching the floor. So you either wanna just skim the grass lightly or the ground below you, or you wanna have nothing touching the floor. Ideally, if you're practicing on grass, then you are just skimming the grass. If you're practicing on concrete, then a skim of concrete is gonna take a lot more out. So yeah, either just skimming the grass or I'd rather you have nothing hitting the ground at this point and then just feel the weight of that rope guiding your movement. Now, I send the rope at one size, but with all the tutorials I send with the ropes, I show people how to shorten the rope. And you simply tie a normal, I think it's called a granny knot, or you can put a figure of eight knot in it to take even more length out. I think you take you know, four to six inches of rope out. Depending on the thickness of the rope, you take four to six inches of rope out per knot you put them in. Number four, often I see people trying to progress too fast. I see people trying to learn sneaks 
that don't have drag and roll down comfortably on both sides. If you can't drag and roll on both sides, it's not really, I don't think, I wouldn't recommend people trying to learn a sneak. Yes, you can learn a sneak, but then you will only be good on one side. As soon as we start to go to double dragons or to sneak matrix, things like that, you wanna build the foundations, the underhand, the overhand, the drag and roll, then you start to learn to sneak by learning the one arm drills that I, I put my things through. One arm rope, this is how we get sneak, this is one arm of the sneak. And then you start to put it together with the drag and roll. But if you can't drag and roll comfortably on both sides, then you're trying to learn the sneaks. I, I really wouldn't recommend that. So know where you're at and drill where you're at until it's really comfortable on all sides and transitioning in and out of it from other patterns as well, and then progress. Number five is about respecting the cardinal laws. And this pertains to the fact that, as I always coach, the rope is a propeller moving in one direction. If you imagine there's sand or there's dirt or dust at your feet, imagine which direction the rope is blowing that dirt. And it should never change direction. So if you're doing a matador pattern and then into overhand and then you go into drag and roll and now if you just stay in that pattern, imagine which way the dirt's blowing at your feet. Now what you should what should happen is when you go from overhand into a drag and roll is you turn 90 degrees into the drag and roll. So the overhand's here, you go 90 degrees drag and roll here, the dirt or the dust would still blow in the same direction. Now what I see a lot of people doing is they do overhand and then they try to force the drag and roll from the overhand, cutting the corner. If, if this rope is a, a lighter, more forgiving manifestation of maybe a giant sword say, you wouldn't be able to suddenly go in one direction and then suddenly change the direction of a big weight. So because it's a lighter version, you're here, you step sideways, and it, it's, it's in this pattern now. So respecting the cardinal laws, we talk about it in the courses. Hopefully you can understand it from what I've just explained here, but a big one that I see people make that mistake early on. Number six, I'd say is not listening to the rope. Although if I'm honest, you kind of have to listen quite early on with this one. The rope is speaking, it's not speaking in a common tongue language, but it might be hitting you on one side. You might be doing the underhand drill, really basic, but it might hit you on the right leg frequently and you never notice it happens on your left. And this is the communication. This is telling you you have an imbalance. This is, you have a, a rigid movement pattern. You're not quite rotating enough on one side. There's some feedback that it's trying to tell you. You could film yourself or see yourself in a mirror to find out, or you can continue to practice and the body will go, I don't like that very much. I'm gonna make sure I avoid that happening. And that's why we talk about the rope as a teacher and a guide is because it can whip you rather, or it can hit you, whereas I wouldn't do that. It can do it for me. And then it can show you, oh, you have an imbalance, uh, a lack of fluidness or smoothness in your movement pattern. Therefore, you've got to listen to the rope. And so one thing, some people don't listen, but eventually I think people do get the message. So listen to the rope. And number seven, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make that if they're practicing and they want to improve and they want to improve fast, this would be my number one tip to improve as fast as possible. This is the reason I progressed as quickly as I did. And that was to watch myself rolling rope and specifically in a mirror. A mirror is the number one way to improve your rope practice. I went to the gym every day with my rope and I didn't end up doing the equipment or anything. I just spent hours on the rope in the mirror, um, let go of caring what people thought of me because that's another test that that's one of the reasons I think people uh, struggle to watch themselves or to do it in a public place if it's in the mirror or then even to film themselves. Sometimes we don't like watching ourselves on camera and actually seeing the truth of how we're moving or whatever, or we, we do it once and we think we're really cool. Trust me, done this as well. Yeah, I feel really cool when I'm moving, film it. Oh dang, I'm not as cool as I thought I looked. I don't want to film myself and watch it anymore. or I don't want to do that thing anymore. Well, that's a bit of truth and that's a chance for us to work and improve. So if we can take the sort of ego check on that, if we really care about um, efficiency and progress and feeling better, at the cost of this pain that the truth revealed to us, well then there's a great chance to improve. So watching ourselves, film yourself is a great way because then you can assess it. You can, you know, later on when you're eating, you can watch yourself and go, oh, actually I didn't realize I wasn't quite, on my right side wasn't quite as neat as my left or I can see why it's hitting me on that side. I'm not turning enough. Uh, or like I say, in a mirror, number one, they both give us different kinds of feedback because when you watch it and you're not actually in action, you get to see something. When you watch it and you are in action, you can repeat a pattern in the mirror and 
each rep you can change it slightly and tweak it as you go you can go slow go quick whatever you want do both sides so change the angle go front on go side on so watching yourself in a mirror filming yourself big mistake I see I, I don't think people do this enough I don't know I'm not around everyone all the time but I don't think people do this enough and it would be my number one tip to progress fast if you're not doing it highly recommend it so I've got a bonus one here and it's not so much a mistake with it comes to how they practice the rope it's more of a mistake in comes to how much you can get out of the enjoyment of the rope and that is applying the rope practice and the principles to anything else that we're doing physically in our life and for me it wasn't until I actually felt the movement patterns from the rope applied and carry over to my running that gave me 10 times more joy and belief in what I'm doing. I wouldn't be here making this content to share this with people um, if I didn't have that belief that came from the moment when I felt what the rope did for my movement outside of the rope flow practice. So rope flow for rope flow's sake, if that's your passion and you enjoy it, great. But for me, the real joy is the carryover from this to everything else. So for you, it could be swimming, it could be tennis, it could be wrestling or boxing or MMA or something, but, but practice transitioning over what you're doing in the rope practice to your other sporting or athletic endeavors, and that really will, will fuel and spark your practice to carry on and to deepen and to go further into what you're doing. So there's just a little bonus piece of advice from me to you. Thank you for watching. I hope that helped you in some way. If there's any that stood out to you or if there's mistakes that are common that you think I've missed, please let me know in the comments below. I do read and reply to all the sensible ones. If you want to start your rope flow journey or deepen your practice with me, check out wayofthereope.com for ropes and courses. I do recommend or beginners or intermediate that want to join me, check out the eight weeks to fluidity course. Also, if you'd like, please sign up to our monthly newsletter with more tips like this and advice and discounts for wearetherope.com. You can sign up to that, link down below. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video.